This time on Sightseeing Spot Facts, we're taking a look at Mont Saint-Michel. Mont Saint-Michel, which in English translates to St. Michael's Mount, is a beautiful tidal island in Normandy, France. Its striking appearance has inspired many movies and video games, from Disney movies to Lord of the Rings. This breathtaking island lies about one kilometre from France's northwestern coast and attracts over three million tourists each year. It's been a UNESCO World Heritage Site for 45 years, having been added to the list in 1979, just one year after the list was created. Recognised for its distinct beauty and significance as a Catholic landmark, it's easy to see why people are drawn to this place. After all, it even appears to float when the fog rolls in. The Gothic-style Benedictine Abbey, perched at the very top of this rocky islet, is devoted to the Archangel Michael, who is often depicted as a warrior angel fighting against evil. The statue of the Archangel, commissioned in 1896, sits atop the abbey's spire at a height of 170 metres. No doubt the most important fact to consider when looking at Mont Saint-Michel is that it was built on a rocky foundation much smaller than the abbey itself, meaning that underground crypts and chapels had to be built underneath it to support its size and weight. The abbey is the main attraction at Mont Saint-Michel but it's the site as a whole that brings people here. The narrow cobblestone streets and steps wind their way to the top, leading visitors through the medieval village with its shops, restaurants and cafes. There are around 50 shops on the island, but its population of around 30 is dwarfed by the millions of visitors who come here each year. Even fewer people, about 25, stay on the island overnight apart from guests who stay at the hotels here. Walking around the ramparts takes you back in time to when these medieval fortifications once protected the island from attacks. They also offer fantastic views across the bay at both high and low tide. The origins of this place date back 1,300 years to the year 708 AD when a local bishop, now known as St. Aubert, was visited in a dream by the Archangel Michael. The Archangel is said to have appeared to him three times, each time urging him to construct a place of worship in his name. On the final visit, the Archangel touched his head, leaving a hole in his skull, which is still visible today. Realistically speaking, though, it was probably due to a medieval surgical treatment in which a hole is drilled into the skull to treat certain health problems. By the year 966, Benedictine monks had erected the first church, and over the centuries it evolved into the magnificent abbey and site that we see today. During the Hundred Years' War between England and France, England attacked the island a number of times during the 1400s, but each time the fortifications proved too much for them to overcome, and they were never able to capture the island. You can still see two iron cannons left by the English when they gave up their attack. It's even said that Joan of Arc was inspired by the resilience witnessed here, spurring her to join the battle against the English. Speaking of the English, you can see the English counterpart of Mont Saint-Michel off the southwest coast of England, called St. Michael's Mount. Built by the same Benedictine order of France after the King of England gave it to them, it's a little smaller and not as tall as the French version, but it's still one of the most popular tourist attractions in Cornwall. The popularity of Mont Saint-Michel as a pilgrimage site declined because of changes in religious beliefs, and by the time of the French Revolution, at the end of the 1700s, there were hardly any monks here. So the abbey was closed under Napoleon's rule, and converted into a prison to hold church members 
who opposed the new government, and later political prisoners as well. This device here, called a tread wheel, still remains. Prisoners would walk inside it like a hamster to raise supplies up to the top. The prison closed in 1863, and in the 1870s, French architect Edouard Courier spent 15 years restoring the main abbey building, turning it into the national treasure it was now being seen as. In 2014, a new bridge was opened, replacing the old causeway, but still allowing water to flow freely around the island. Just a year later, the sea would put the new bridge to the test, when a super tide completely covered it. Luckily, these are rare, only happening once every 18 years. Centuries before the bridge and raised causeway were built, getting to Mont Saint-Michel was by no means easy. The shoreline was farther back, and the waters were deeper, making it difficult and dangerous to reach the island. Many pilgrims died while getting stuck in the quicksand and fast-moving tides. Although most people today cross over to the island using the bridge, it's still possible to cross the bay the way the pilgrims once did. But if you do, you best take one of the many different guided walking tours just to be safe. You may also see sheep grazing around the salt marsh meadows of the bay. The high salt content in the meadows gives their meat a unique taste which has become a delicacy at Mont Saint-Michel that you can try for yourself. Lastly, if you get the chance to come here, consider staying on the island overnight. After the day tourists have gone, the island takes on a new dimension when the sun goes down. The narrow streets and shops are quiet and dimly lit by old-fashioned street lamps, and taking a slow stroll through the village is like stepping into Hogmeade's village in Harry Potter. The only difference being, this is not a fantasy. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe for more.